just getting the game started up. Okay. What wheel in the house? Came riding from the south side, slowly looking all around. He's an outlaw, loose and running, came the whisper from each lip. And he's here to do some business with the big iron on his hip. Big iron on his hip. In this town there lived an outlaw by the name of Texas Red. Many men had tried to take him and that many men were dead. Is on his pistol, number one, nineteen more. Call it a nineteen more. Now the stranger started talking, made it plain to folks around. Was it Arizona Ranger? Wouldn't be too long in town. He came here to take an outlaw back alive or maybe dead. And he said it didn't matter, he was after Texas Red. After Texas Red It wasn't long before the story was relayed to Texas Red <laughs> nice. But the outlaw didn't worry men the tribe before we're dead Twenty so men had tried to take it twenty minutes is Ghost Town Gunfight offered to help Ringo deal with the powder gangers. And that one, yeah, that's an ongoing. Yeah, yeah. It was twenty past eleven when they walked out in the street. Folks were watching from the windows. Everybody held their breath. Inquire about your delivery. Okay. About to meet his death. There was 40 feet between them when they stopped to make their play. So I got a couple things in Prim, but I guess first I'm going to take care of this gunfight. We still talk about today. Texas red and not cleared leather for a bullet fairly ripped. And the ranger's aim was deadly with the big iron on his hip. Big iron on his hip. It was over in a moment <laughs> and the folks had gathered round There before them lay the body of the outlaw on the ground Oh, he might have went on living, but he made one fatal slip When he tried to match the ranger with the big iron on his hip Big iron on his hip Big iron, big iron when he tried to match the ranger with the big iron on his hip, big iron on his hip. Greetings, citizen. I guess my endurance probably isn't good enough. Try it. No, I'm telling people that. Oh! Yay! The sailor said, quote, ain't that a hole in a boat? My head keeps spinning. 
I go to sleep and keep grinning If this is just to be given Hi there. Sticking around Good Springs for a while longer? Beautiful life, sun shining up to spread. It's just like a fella said. Now we bring another kick in the head. Sure can. Take the road southeast out of town till it hits the freeway. Prim is the town with a roller coaster straight south. Can't miss it. NCR patrols do a good job of keeping the highway clear. But I'd keep your gun where you can reach it easily. You never know who you'll run into. Off the road, you'll probably start running into hostile wildlife. My advice would be to stick to the highway when you can. Until next time. I guess I didn't give him an answer. So go back up to the gas station. And give him his answer and say, I'll help you. Because I'm supposed to be trying to talk people into helping. I don't think I already did that. She's picked out a king size eyes. I couldn't feel any better, or I'd be sick. Tell me quick. Boy, ain't love a kick. Tell me quick. I'm wondering if this chat window needs to go into a better place. <laughs> I think it does. One second. Move this thing. Uh, maybe up here. Maybe that'll be better. Try that. Go to sleep. Just lay down with your weary head. That's close Dream, enough. Sweet. Who are you? And what do you want with me? About Sorry about the gun. You just caught me off guard, that's all. We got off to a bad start. What say we start over with a friendly game of caravan? You know how to play? It's a two-player game, and the winner takes the whole pot. You build a caravan using the cards in your deck. The goal is to create caravan bids that beat your opponent's bids, so there's more strategy than luck involved. It's why you won't see caravan in any casino. Too slow-paced, and more importantly, no house edge. Here, take this holotape. It goes into more specifics about the rules. You'll also need a deck, so take one of my spares. So. You feel like playing a game? Sure. Don't worry. I'm not that good of a player. So he says. Yeah. Ladies and such a gentlemen, goodness. welcome to our program. This is Mr. New Vegas, and each and every one of you is wonderful in your own special way. More news for you. The death toll continues to climb around Camp Forlorn Hope, where Legion raiding parties are still chipping away at the NCR's hole south of the dam. One more story for you. Tensions are brewing in Freeside between the ruling gang known as the Kings and the large number of NCR squatters seeking refuge there. The leader of the Kings, who would only identify himself as the King, voiced his displeasure calling NCR citizens, quote, the devil in disguise. He added he didn't want to see the NCR in the ghetto and called for a mass, quote, return to sender. You know, I think all news, whether it's good or bad, brings us closer together. Don't you? And now, I'd like to play one of my very favorite songs for you.
36. Okay. What does that mean? I win? You lose no shit. I know it's to be mad Something wore off. What is it? Yeah, he doesn't look very tough, though. I hear he's afraid I'll shoot him down from one of the windows when I see him. And he's right. I'll have a much bigger problem once his friends show up. There's no way I could handle all of them in a gunfight. My caravan was on the return trip from California, and heading back to the company branch in New Vegas when we got jumped. Not even a drop your weapons and hands up before the bullets started flying. We put up a good fight, but there was too many of them. I took a few of the bandits down before I ran, so I figured their friends were out for revenge. I'm gonna lay low for as long as I can, assuming the town doesn't throw me to the wolves. I've got no chance against the gang on my own. We'd just end up sharing the same grave if it's just the two of us. Start with sunny smiles. Okay. Hi there, sticking around Good Springs for a while longer? Say no more, I'm in. Just like that. I have a feeling that I'm going to end up fighting those guys one way or another, so I might as well get it over with. Joe Cobb talks about leaving us alone if we hand over Ringo, but I know his type. He and his friends will come after the town eventually. However, between you, me, and Ringo, we aren't exactly a force to be reckoned with. A lot of people around here look up to Trudy. If you could convince Trudy to join us, some of the folks in town might decide to help out as well. I know Easy Pete's got a stock of dynamite somewhere, and Chet just got a shipment of leather armor we could borrow. Talk to them as well. Finally, there's a good chance we'll all end up with extra holes in us. So if Doc Mitchell could cough up some extra stim packs, that'd be great. A silver tongue would help. Convincing Trudy that we had a good plan to win the fight would also help. Easy Pete's pretty protective of his dynamite. You'd have to convince him you know a thing or two about explosives before you handed it over. I don't think give is in Chet's vocabulary. Even with the town at stake, he'd still make you barter with him. I'll be waiting. So you're planning on taking on Joe Cobb's gang. It's a big risk, but I suppose you have to do what you think is right. I was planning on sitting this one out, but for some reason, I can't help but like you. I'm with you. Let me have a word with a few other folks, and I'll see if I can't round up some more members for this militia you're creating. While everyone does own a gun, we could stand to be a little better equipped. The general store probably has what we need in stock. Be careful out there. Easy pee. I can see that lone star from the 
Try it. Howdy. What can Easy Pete do for you? Too dangerous. I'll kill all yourselves if I let you touch it. Better to leave it buried. Safe with that way. Uh-huh. Guess you know what you're doing. I'll go dig it up and get it ready. You have it by the time the fighting starts. <laughs> Keep your gun handy if you go poking around some of the abandoned places around here, like the schoolhouse. Critters move in there sometimes. Hey, what's up, Jack? Or Jacques? I'm still not sure. You said you're from Canada. <laughs> it could be Jack or Jacques. Yes, I do remember you.
wherever I go, it's always the same. Folks just never leave each other alone. Oh, I'm not much good in a fight with my bum leg. And my supplies are scarce. But I'll give you what I can spare. I was once an adventurer like you, but I took an arrow to the knee. I ain't got much, but it'll do you more good out there than it will in here. Take what I got. You take care now. I forgot what the hell my quick save button is. I think it's F4. So what's going on? Did Sonny agree to help us? Well, I guess that means we're ready to go. Unless you think there's something else you can do. All right. I'll just wait here until you come get me. Oh, so I guess I am ready. What's the plan? Are we ready? Let's do this. All right, I'm ready. I hope. Time to look alive. The Powder Gangers are here to play. At least six. Joe Cobb included. They look pretty mean. Oh, Easy Pete came through with the dynamite. Here's your supply. I really hope I don't blow myself up. I'll be set up near the store. Let's hope that the gang doesn't manage to make it that far. Six shooter. I wonder if I'd use my gold plated gun. <laughs> you know you guys are standing behind dynamite, don't you? Some medics. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I don't have any. <laughs> I got wasted. Be sure it's you when you say I love It's a Find the one with the dynamite.
If you break my heart, I'll die. So be sure it's true when you say I. Motherfuckers throwing dynamite already. huge favor for this. Here, these are technically Crimson Caravan funds, but I know they'll understand once I explain things. Hmm. Should be a dick. I did have what was left of the Crimson Caravan money. But I wasn't sure if it was my right to just give it away. I owe you more than that, though. So look me up at the Crimson Caravan Camp up in New Vegas if you ever visit. All right. Shit. I'm sure. Shit. The storyteller don't know. There he is. Why pretend to be happy when I'm I don't 
But show where to fly him. He loves like dough that's been spent. Not if no use to cry him. Tell me where can I go? East or west or north or do south. You let the blue back in a pistol now. I guess he liked it. Yeah, poor puppy. I've sworn to carry your burdens. Oh no, give me that back. But it sure when I fly him Love like no that's been spent Now there's no use to cry him Am I naked? Tell me where can I go? Yes East or west or north or new south Does a hat do you anything? Move in, now I'm moving out You let the blues move in Now I'm moving out Yes, I'm gonna sell everything. <laughs> he likes the machete. I'm taking it. Yeah, grenade rifle. Let's see what else I can fix up before I go selling it. Hell of a fight. Let's hope it doesn't bite us in the ass later on. That yeah, won't. Can do. somewhere yeah right there yeah it's all right I just I don't know know why the hell I'm sneezing Price she helped. <laughs> Give me a shout if you need anything else. Take it easy now. 
There's something else I noticed. Yeah, this. Yeah, it's a thought. My cold's all right. Howdy. Let's see here. By the glow, yes. Between these damaged pages is a tail complete and intact. Yep, free war printing too stubborn to be dislodged by the sands of time. Thank you for this gift, friend. I'll stick by our deal and give you a tale of my own in exchange. I think I have just the story in mind. Would you like me to tell you the story now, or should we save it for another time? Well, let's hear the story. We just killed a bunch of people. The story is about the super mutants. Would you like to hear it? Yes. Very well. When the Great War annihilated civilization, the survivors lost their loved ones, their homes, and their worldly goods. They endured a daily search for food, water, and medicine. They also had to seek out their lost identities. People have always defined themselves by the work they do, the place they live, the things they own. In the Great War, it wasn't just buildings that were destroyed. Entire cultures were erased from history. In the brutal years that followed, the survivors had to define themselves again, find meaning in their existence, or face a metaphorical loss of their humanity. But a much more literal threat to their humanity was already in place, waiting quietly beneath the desert for someone to stumble across it. Someone did, nearly a century after the war, and that threat came closer to extinguishing humanity than all the bombs and guns of the old wars. A single neutron passing through a strand of DNA can cause a cancerous tumor, but a lifetime of exposure to unprecedented amounts of atomic fallout will have wildly unpredictable results. After a few generations of passing on this defective DNA, a species will begin to mutate. That explains many of the strange beasts running around the wasteland, but not all of them. There's a different strain of mutant out there. They're shaped like men, but bigger. Some of them are more dangerous than death claws, stronger than a man in power armor. They call themselves super mutants, and they're not the result of random contact with radiation, but rather a deliberate act of genetic tampering. Holotapes unearthed in pre-war military installations show that the United States government started out with good intentions. Rival nations had attacked America with biological weapons, resulting in a new plague, so America's leaders created their own defensive virus. The plan, originally, was to make a germ that would mutate America's population just enough that they would become immune to the viruses that the enemy might use. In a sense, this forced evolutionary virus worked, but the effects were much more drastic than anticipated. The animal test subjects mutated by it were not only resistant to common biological weapons, they also grew stronger and more intelligent, but monstrously deformed. In Maryland, the virus was placed in a Vault-Tec vault and used as part of their cruel experiments. According to files recovered from a Vault-Tec mainframe, the people who took shelter in that vault were exposed to the virus by their own overseer, the very man assigned to protect them after the bombs fell. After escaping the war, these people suffered even worse than those trapped on the surface. The mutation process is painful, and most people exposed to the virus die a horrible death in a body they don't even recognize as their own. Those who do survive often wish they hadn't, because their very humanity is taken from them. Whatever they look like before mutating, they transform into an enormous, bald, green brute. That sudden loss of identity would enrage almost anyone, Maybe with enough therapy, a person could come to terms with their new body. But most of the poor creatures suffered from another side effect, reduced cognitive capability. Despite the virus's potential to increase intelligence in some people, most of the super mutants on the East Coast were just plain stupid. In fact, many of their brains were too small to perform even basic autonomic functions like breathing. For those that survived, there were some positive trade-offs, their strength increased tremendously, as did their size. Even the small ones are nearly 10 feet tall. 
In the capital wasteland, these beasts continue growing throughout their existence. Wanderers have reported fighting super mutants that are 15 feet tall, and foolhardy adventurers have pumped hundreds of bullets from assault rifles into mutant overlords without bringing them down. Scouts from the Brotherhood of Steel even claim to have fought super mutants that are 20 feet tall and can survive a direct hit from a mini-nuke. The only factor that keeps them in check is that they are infertile and cannot reproduce, at least not the way that they did when they were still human. The first mutants created in that horrid vault might not have been as intelligent as the humans who created them, but they had strength and righteous fury on their side. The mutants turned on their creators and transformed them into the next generation of super mutants, and in time, the vault was nothing but mutants, alone, undying, and just intelligent enough to know that they had been betrayed by humanity. Forcibly stripped of their humanity, robbed of their ability to reason, and transformed into massive brutes, they were an angry horde trapped inside a vault. Rage and boredom are an unstable mixture, and eventually that vault burst. Hundreds of super mutants emerged into a wasteland where their enhanced physical abilities made them better suited to survive than the humans around them. The disorganized humans had only one advantage, and that was their numerical superiority. Outnumbered and unable to breed, the mutants were still cunning enough to understand that they had to boost their ranks by kidnapping humans and exposing them to the virus. Further west, things were more complicated. California and the west coast had their share of trouble with super mutants, but those mutants they didn't just suddenly pop out of a vault and rampage like mindless savages. The mutants of the Wasteland's core region were the result of a misguided plan to set the world right. The mutant army was smart enough to scour the lands for new humans to mutate, and to select people with little exposure to radiation. Using humans with DNA undamaged by radioactivity meant they were more likely to keep their intelligence after mutating. The size and capability of this inhuman swarm grew, always hungry for the purest human DNA to serve as the building blocks of a master race. This was before the new California Republic had solidified, before the Enclave chose to reveal itself, back when the Brotherhood of Steel kept their technology closely guarded. There was nothing to stand against an army with such organization, such single-mindedness, such unity. Who they had been before no longer mattered. The super mutants weren't divided by old world notions of race, and they did not bicker over religious beliefs, for they all worshipped the same dark god and claimed that they could hear his voice in their heads. Did this dark god exist? Were the mutants led by some cunning mutant general? Could the master race have a master of its own? Someone or something was certainly behind this new unity movement. No doubt, through much trial and error, this dark god created generations of flawed beasts before finally discovering that the FEV works most effectively on people who have low levels of radiation exposure. Access to pre-war computers revealed that the wasteland held secret communities of uncontaminated vault dwellers whose gene pools had been protected for generations deep beneath the earth where the radioactive fallout couldn't reach them. It's ironic that the super mutant master was done in by the actions of one of these vault dwellers. Regardless of how it happened, with their master gone, the mutant army scattered. The former elite guard of the mutant army have taken the fall of their master the hardest and have become an unpredictable menace. These nightkin, as they call themselves, were once the best of their species, augmenting their strength and cunning with pre-war stealth technology. They are usually still in possession of the rare Stealth Boy devices and use them without concern for the harmful effects of prolonged exposure. After decades of constant use, their minds have degenerated and their skin is darkened to a distinctive gray. They are plagued by hallucinations and imaginary friends. Often their jabbering is the only sign that one is nearby. Due to their tendency to appear in unexpected places and engage in bizarre behavior, a single nightkin can be more dangerous than a group of their green-skinned brethren. Some super mutants have formed their own communities, following charismatic leaders across the wasteland. Turn a radio to the right frequency in the right parts of Nevada, and there is a broadcast coming from a mutant girl who thinks she can take the master's place and guide the mutants to a new utopia. Although she has gathered many followers, 
Her mental instability ensures that this is Yeah, Storyteller's a badass. Some wanderers even speak of outright friendly super mutant companions who accompany them as friends and equals. I'm a YouTube channel Given their resilience the and long lives, these benevolent creatures could still be out there looking for new adventures and traveling companions. A few diverse communities consisting of humans, ghouls, and mutants alike have popped up, at least for a time. Despite the best efforts to get along, it seems that differences will always reduce people to fighting among themselves. Perhaps that dark god was right, and what the Wasteland really needs is more unity. So I'm rich. Let's see what my quest is now. Pest control that's ongoing. No, no. Definitely no. No. That one is funny, but no. Not right now. Uh, that's ongoing. Yeah, I gotta go to Prim for this one. Uh, oh, collect the recruitment module at Good Springs. Let's, let's track that. Oh! I missed one. Give me some of my money back. Oh wait, I took all his money. Who's this? Oh. Turn naked. I'm overloaded again. I'm sworn to carry your burdens. To say that I don't miss you when people know. Why can't I get any ammo for that? Boy, maybe he has ammo now. I swear, after I get that module, I'm going to Prim. Which is a whole new mess. Dick. You looking to buy some supplies? Can do. I need... What is it? 40 millimeter grenades.
get all this stuff. I'm sworn to carry your burdens. Oh, it's in here, okay. This old house ain't a home. We put no love inside it, but we said have pretty strong. Thanks again for all your help. I've never stopped here until recently. You're better. Yeah. Yeah, the bounty hunter, of course. Alright, I need to go take a piss. I'll be right back. <laughs> face. I almost took you for a raider I did. Name's Malcolm. Malcolm Holmes. Don't suppose you'd care to trade. I'm missing a few essentials in... Ah, oh, screw this. Lying just ain't in my nature. I'll tell it to you straight. I've been following you for a good bit now. It started off innocently enough. I was traveling, as I often do, and happened to observe you picking up one of those blue star caps. You didn't show any reaction to it. So, I figured you didn't know what you'd gotten your hands on.
There's an old wasteland legend that says somewhere out there is a fabulous treasure from before the war. Those caps with the blue star on them, the tail goes, are the key to that treasure. They're called Sunset Sarsaparilla Stars. All over the place. The easiest place to find them is unopened bottles of Sunset Sarsaparilla. You'd think they'd all have been picked clean by now. But somehow, new bottles keep appearing in the machines. Some say it's old Festus that does it, hoping someone will finally collect enough caps to earn the treasure. Other than bottles, you'll just have to scavenge. You can find caps in the unlikeliest of places, and blue star caps are no exception. It's said that the treasure is guarded by a man named Festus, and he's the one who asked for the blue star caps. It's also said he's been around since the war, standing a lonely vigil, waiting for someone to come and take the treasure off his hands. That'll make him pretty damn old, but I've met a few people in my travels who claim they actually met him, and they weren't the lying type either. No one knows. Money, weapons, water. It is, or maybe was, something of value, and that's enough to get people motivated. Nah, I gave it up years ago. Too dangerous. And even if I did still collect them, I'd tell you the same. There's people out there so mad with the idea of treasure that they'll attack strangers just on the suspicion that they have some of those caps. No problem. If you do end up trying to collect more stars, watch out for a man named Alan Marks. He's killed several people for their stars already. Yeah, listen to three dogs. Oh, wow, wow, on Galaxy News Radio. The number one radio station. You see that shit, Storyteller? See if these guys have 40 millimeter grenades. I know they got some money. <clears throat> I'm sworn to carry your burdens. I guess Frank's a mute, yeah. <laughs> Probably part of that Project Nevada, they couldn't get enough voice actors or something. I do voice acting, shit, I got a good mic. Might not sound like it on here, but that's because I haven't figured out how to use the filters. No, it ain't crashed. 
say I love you more. Yes, I've got heartaches by the number of love that I can't win. But the day that I stop counting, that's the day my world will end. I mean, it was a 20 gauge, wasn't it? That one, I got plenty of that. 357, 44 mag. Spoke to folks around him, didn't have too much to say. No one dared to ask his business, no one dared to make a slip. The stranger there among them had a big iron on his hip, big iron on his hip. Morning. She's not new. It was early in the morning when he rode into the town. He came riding from the south side, slowly looking all around. Uh, you guys want to hear New He's Vegas radio again? Or do you want to keep listening to uh, Mojave music or whatever the hell it's called? Huh? You want to talk some more? Oh, that was the guy that approached me in the middle of the night. If you say so, maybe we'll meet again.
know, three dog, you're hearing three dog from Edna. <clears throat> Desperado hat. Let's see what the other one looks like. The Swamp Gambler hat. <laughs> that just looks funny as hell with what I'm wearing. Let's stick with that one. It's in better shape. You're listening to Radio New Vegas, your little jukebox in the Mojave Wasteland. I am Mr. New Vegas, and I'm here for you. Whoops, better put on my newsman fedora here. Merchants are saying that there's been little contact between traders from Nipton in recent days, causing concerns that the isolated town may be in trouble. Also in the headlines, the Helios 1 solar power plant remains dormant despite NCR's effort to reactivate the facility. The chief scientist at the plant vowed to fix the problem, blaming it on an atmosphere of, quote, severe underappreciation. Those are our stories for this hour. This is Mr. New Vegas signing off. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not going anywhere. My love for you. Ladies and gentlemen, this next song goes out. It needs to be fixed.
drive to Raiders causing trouble in this area as well. We'll be safer heading back up to Good Springs. We'd love to. They don't fall under its jurisdiction. Even if they did, we're in no shape to protect them. Lieutenant Hayes of the New California Republic Army, 5th Battalion, 1st Company. What's your business? Where do you come from that you haven't heard of the NCR? Never mind, it doesn't matter much. If you haven't heard of us, you must not be from the Legion. Put simply, the NCR is the greatest nation currently functioning. Sure can. The NCR was founded from the survivors of one of the Great Vaults. We started as a small settlement called Shady Sands. We now consist of five states that make up the greatest nation since the Great War. Caesar's Legion, a bunch of degenerate slavers led by a madman who calls himself Caesar. Every one of them is a barbarian to the last. I've even heard one of their leaders, the Legate or something, goes around with a human skull on his head. Savages to the last. It's no secret. Our interest here is twofold. First, we want to remain in control of Hoover Dam. It supplies the Republic with power and is a source of fresh water. Second, we want to prevent the Legion from advancing across the Colorado River and endangering the home states. Have some free time. Ask away. We were sent out here to hold back the tide of convicts from the correctional facility. As you can probably tell, we aren't doing the kind of job we could be doing. Most people just call it NCRCF, that's NCR Correctional Facility. A little bit ago, the convicts there staged a coup, killed the guards that weren't able to escape, and have been ransacking the area since then. Not much. They've taken to calling themselves powder gangers, mostly because they've taken to using the explosives meant to clear boulders as weapons. They got organized faster than I would have thought, most of them at least. Thankfully, the small group in town here seemed to have split off from the main force, so they aren't getting anything in the way of support. The mission isn't a problem, the problem is with supplies. The convicts are better armed and organized than our intel initially suggested. I'm trying to get some reinforcements here, maybe some guns with some firepower, but Sure. Things are just going slow. I have some free. Sir. Careful. Things aren't as safe around here as they could be.
We won't go quietly. The Legion can count on that. I'm gonna go smoke a cigarette. I'll be right back. In other news, 
Caesar's Legion continues to fortify his position in Nelson, where it remains a constant concern for Camp Forlorn Hope and the nearby town of Novak. Mojave? Mo problems. Am I right? Got some Dean Martin coming up. Talking about the greatest feeling in the world. Love. Ain't that a kick in the head? Sure is. Dino. It sure is. We won't go quietly. The Legion can count on that. I'm Sergeant McGee of the New California Republic Army, 5th Battalion, 1st Company. I did that already. I'm from Mojave originally, but it's been a long time since I saw him. I'm on my second tour here. Most non-commissioned officers are. Sir. Yeah, I'm back too. <laughs> Welcome back, work wheel. Welcome back, children. You're listening to Galaxy News Radio, the heart and soul of the Capitol. Mine, mine, mine. That's how you gotta get across to get over there. Yeah, listen to three dogs. Wow, wow, on Galaxy Radio, the number one radio station in the metropolitan area. <laughs> the women of New Vegas ask me a lot if there's a Mrs. New Vegas. Well, of course there is. You're her. And you're still as perfect as the day we met. And now the news. Tensions are brewing at Freeside between the ruling gang known as the Kings and the large number of NCR squatters seeking refuge there. The leader of the kings, who would only identify himself as the king, voiced his displeasure calling NCR citizens, quote, the devil in disguise. He added he didn't want to see the NCR in the ghetto and call for a mass, quote, return to sender. Moving on. The death toll continues to climb around Camp Forlorn Hope, where Legion raiding parties are still chipping away at the NCR's hold south of the dam. Boy, the Mojave Wasteland is just a fascinating place, isn't it? You never know what's going to happen next. And now, Nat King Cole reminding us what really matters with Love Me As Though There Were No Tomorrow. Because in New Vegas, hey, you never know. Sorrow, so when I wake 
tomorrow. You ready, homie? Oh, no, Quick save. Life. Not him. Definitely not. Up to in the Philippines. somebody around. I know that because of my recent death.
not you. I'm gonna open the door. I don't know what it was brought you to Prim, youngster, but you might want to rethink your plans. Town's gone to hell. Johnson Nash is my name. Husband of Ruby now. Lived in Prim going on eight years now. Thick. I'm a trader primarily, for what it's worth with things like they are. I also run the local Mojave Express outpost. Well, I don't got any work right now, sorry to say. I'll tell you whatever I can. If you have a delivery order, you can show me. Oh, you're talking about one of them packages. That job had strange written all over, but we couldn't turn down the caps. That cowboy robot had us hire six couriers. Each was carrying something a little different. A pair of dice, a chess piece, that kind of stuff. Last word I have in the office, it looked like payment had been received for the other five jobs. Guess it was just your chip that didn't make it. First deadbeat we hired to do the job, canceled. Hope a storm from the divide skins him alive. Well, that's where you came in. But you're so yeah, I got this look when he saw you next down on the courier list. His expression turned right around. Asked me if your name was for real. I said, sure as lack of rain, you were still kicking. Then he turned down the job, just like that. I asked if he was sure it was good money. No, but courier six carried pipes, that's what he said. Like the Mojave sort you out or something. Then he just up and walked out. No idea. Sounds like you two had a history for him to act like that. And turn down the money, too. Hope he didn't see any trouble in that package of yours. Maybe he thought your name was bad luck. Not enough for me to say. Nope. Different fella. Bigger. Had himself a face on a screen. And he talked more like you and me. Well, now that you mentioned it, a few nights back, one of the townies was out scavenging for supplies. He said he saw a fellow with a daisy suit come through with some of them great con misfits. They was talking about a chip. Well, for that, your best bet is going to be talking to Deputy Big. Since they came to town, he was keeping a good bit of notes on them. And he was slinking around Bison Steve when your pretty boy friend came through. He may have heard where they were going. Mm -hmm. I guess I don't have anywhere better to be. Sure, I'll tell you what I know. A Beagle had some notes he was taking while he was eavesdropping around the pot of gangsters. He'll be your best source of information on that subject. Gangers, gangsters, all sounds like trouble to me. Well, I'll answer what I can. Sure do. I run the courier office out of my shop. Least ways I did before things went to hell. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. New Vegas here. Let's see. Been tough around here for a good while now. Worse since them thugs kidnapped our deputy. It started with the breakout from the prison up the road. First there was just a few thugs rolling through town. But then they got organized. 
Now they call themselves powder gangsters or something, and run around throwing dynamite and shooting people. A little while ago, a good chunk of them left whatever kind of organization they got up there to squeeze all the food and drink out of us they could. I guess I don't... Well, you can call Beagle a deputy so long as you don't harbor too high an opinion of the word. Boy was about as useful as tits on a rad scorpion. Only qualification he ever had was to be brother to the wife of the sheriff. Still, I suppose he don't deserve what's befell him. We would have considered paying the ransom if we'd had caps to spare. Right now, Beagle is the closest Prim's got to any organized law, but he's still... First thing I'd say is get his sorry butt out of here. It's an old hotel and casino here in town. Old Laura used to rent out rooms there, but she took off months ago. Across the way from the Vicky and Vance, the other old casino. Can't miss it. That's where we are. This here little casino brought some cash and bodies into the town before them powder gangsters came in. Now they can't rush us without eating a good bit of hot lead, but we are in a kind of box cannon. Guess this is a fitting place for that as any. I reckon that if they thought hard enough about it, they'd realize they got more bodies than we have bullets. But for now, we're safe in Well, yes and no. My shop's got plenty. Problem is, I ain't going into my shop until I know it's good and safe. Yeah, bye. Sure as we live, something's gotta give, something's gotta give, something's gotta give. You come to the wrong place, Jeff. Prim's done. You've got any sense. Howdy, partner. Welcome to the Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum. Prim Slim at your service. Authentic cowpoke and official spoke spot of the Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum. Yeehaw! Where have you been, partner? Hiding under a rock? Vicky and Vance were this nation's fourth or maybe fifth Please. most infamous celebrity outlaw couple ever. That's who they was. Prim Slim here can tell you the whole story, if you can spare a minute to hear. Yahoo! I ain't had a chance to tell their tale in a mess of years. First things first, any boss you've heard about Vicky and Vance being copycats ain't nothing but ill-tempered slander. Fact is, they begun their crime spree two days before Bonnie and Clyde robbed their first bank. So who was copying who? Now true, Vicky and Vance didn't exactly cut a wide swath of murder and bank robbery across the central U.S. like Bonnie and Clyde did. It was more like a narrow swath of shoplifting, check cashing fraud, and gas pump drive-offs. But crime is crime. They drove reckless too. Having lived by the gun, well, Vance owned one anyway. It was only fitting that the duo of desperados would die by the gun. Perhaps it was fate itself that accidentally drove them into a crossfire between police and a gang of bank robbers in Plano, Texas. Or maybe they just didn't notice until it was too late. It's been said that Vicky would have tried to cash a bad check in that bank had she lived. We'll never know for sure. All we know is that the crossfire tore the car and both occupants to pieces, and the police issued an official apology. You can put your eyes on the genuine death car just over yonder, and there's Vance's machine gun in the case next to it. <laughs> Prim is a thriving resort community located in Clark County, Nevada, right along Interstate 15. Whether you can't wait till Vegas to try your luck, or want to hit one last jackpot before you leave Nevada, Prim's your place. The town's premier attraction is the world-famous Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum. So you came to the right place, partner. <clears throat> the Bison Steve is one of Prim's less impressive casino hotels. I'd steer clear of that place, partner, if I were you. Rumor is the dealers over there cheap. 
and that rickety roller coaster is liable to fall down any day because it wasn't built to cope. Why, this is the Vicky and Vance Casino and Museum. Print. Happy trails, partner. I've actually seen the Bonnie and Clyde death car. Quite a town we got here. A sheriff gets murdered, and Deputy Beagle dragged off for ransom to the Bison Sea. That should bring back the tourists. Deputy Beagle dragged off for ransom to the Bison Steve. That should bring back the tourists. If you come to the wrong place, Trevor, Prim's dying. I ain't got enough guts to sense you if you're hungry. Hey, youngster. Right now, Beagle's the closest Prim's got to any organized. First thing I'd say is get his sock. I guess it's go save ass face over there. broken.
Welcome back to the program. This is Mr. New Vegas, and I hope I'm not coming on too strong. Here are our top stories. Refugees at Bitter Springs are giving startling accounts of the legate known as Lanius, who is said to be Caesar's top field commander. One refugee told us the legate took over an underperforming squad of troops by beating its commander to death in full view of everyone. The legate then ordered a tenth of his own force be killed by the other nine tenths. And you thought your boss was a pain. One more story for you. The death toll continues to climb around Camp Forlorn Hope, but the county raiding parties are still chipping away at the NCR's hold south of the dam. That's all for now. This is Mr. New Vegas saying, I'm just no good without you. Hey, New Vegas. Have you ever said you love someone when it wasn't quite true? Sure you have, but you shouldn't, because it's a sin to tell a lie. <laughs> the storyteller's a good shot.
this world tonight. Take me. Cheers, right? Blasted that guy. My sorrow. So when I wake tomorrow, I'll know our love won't die. experience or points do I need to get the average <clears throat> to the town of our field a stranger one funded hardly spoke to folks around him didn't have too much to say no one dared to make a biggest, no one dared to make a slip. The stranger there among them had a big iron on his hip, big iron on his hip. It was early in the morning when he rode into the town. He came riding from the south side, slowly looking all around. Fires in the pistol. How much damage that dude? I don't know what the fuck. Come on. And he's here to do some business with the big iron on his hip. Big iron on his hip. In this town they're living out right by the name of Texas Red. Many men he tried to take him and that many men were dead. He was vicious and a killer, though you for 24. And the notches on his pistol numbered one in 19 more. One in 19 more. Now the stranger started talking, made it plain to folks around. Was an Arizona Ranger, wouldn't be too long in town. He came here to take an outlaw back alive or maybe dead. And he said it didn't matter that he was after Texas Red. After Texas Red. Wasn't long before the story was relayed to Texas Red. But the outlaw didn't worry, man, the tribe of forward day. Twenty men had tried to take him, twenty men had made a slip. Twenty-one would be the ranger with the big iron on his hip, big iron on his hip. The morning passed so quickly, it was time for them to leave. It was twenty past eleven when they walked out in the street. Folks were watching from the windows, everybody held their breath. They knew this handsome ranger was about to meet his death, about to meet his death. There was 40 feet between them when they stopped to make their play. 
And the swiftness of the ranger is still talked about today. Texas red is not cleared leather for a bullet fairly ripped. And the ranger's aim was deadly with the big iron on his hip. Big iron on his hip. It was over in a moment and the folks had gathered round. There before them lay the body of the outlaw on the ground. Oh, he might have went on living, but he made one fatal slip when he tried to match the ranger with the big iron on his hip. Big iron on his hip. Big iron, big iron. When he tried to match the ranger with the big iron on his hip. The guy I know is here. Welcome back to the program. This is Mr. New Vegas, and I hope I'm not coming on too strong. Here are our top stories. The Helios-1 solar power plant remains dormant despite NCR's effort to reactivate the facility. The chief scientist at the plant vowed to fix the problem, blaming it on an atmosphere of, quote, severe underappreciation. One more story for you. Citizens of Outer Vegas... Talk got distracted by looting. That's why I don't like dynamite. Fuck that. How about that? No, I Thing is in shit condition. Do the damn, where do you go?
back again. <clears throat> townspeople seem to like it. Let's try this one out. Yeah, the townspeople seem to like them. Let's see what else we can find in here, though. He was running around if I can get killed anyways. to be easier. Maybe I killed them all. It would be so very delightful if you set me free. Oh, that's just marvelous. I think I'll be making my way out. <laughs> oh, why, uh, of course. I'd never let you fight my kidnappers with my help. Without it. You lead the way. Way right now. Troubling news from Prem. As merchants report a large presence of armed and savory figures patrolling the town. Residents are nowhere to be found. In addition, merchants are saying that there's been little contact between traders from Nipton in recent days, causing concerns that the isolated town may be in trouble. If we were to miss a convict or two in here, who'd know the difference? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, this next song goes out from me to you. affect my repair skill. No.
stand an irresistible force such as you. You're a laggy. An old immovable object like me. You can bet just as sure as you live. I didn't notice I had one called Fixing Things. Yeah, I knew that motherfucker would run away. There must be somebody out there. So I'm God Who knows what the fates have in store From their vast mysterious sky I'll try hard Ignoring those lips I adore But how long can anyone try out of ammo, guy. What the hell? As sure as we live. Look how far that goes. Let's try it. Yeah, that far. Steam thing is stuck. You know, I uh, tried to measure my charisma on a Vitomatic Vigor tester once. In the the bottom corner it says, burst Steam the broadcast, you changed the well, best performance. Well, better put on my newsman for the here. Get the fuck out of there. Traders from California are being turned away from Mojave Outpost where the NCR is concerned about dangers along Nipton Highway and I-15. Also in the headlines, the Black Mountain radio signal is back after a long absence. Listeners say the new programming is, quote, less for outcasts, more for weirdos. We'll have more news for you at the top of the hour. Go to play a song for you right now. And it's about that special someone you find only once in a blue moon. Yeah, listen, it's a free dog. Oh. Wow, wow, on Galaxy Radio, the number one radio. 
would only identify himself as the king. Voice is displeasure calling in CR Citizens book, The Devil in Disguise. Let's do that for He added he didn't want to see the NCR in the ghetto and call for a mass quote, return to sender. In other news, the Black Mountain radio signal is back after a long absence. Listeners say the new programming is, quote, less for outcasts, more for weirdos. Today's headlines were brought to you by no, Prim. Seen them. Prim, the other new Vegas. You know, sometimes the journey beats the destination. Him was when, and especially uh, if your spurs go jingle, jangle, jingle, and you meet some nice gals along the way. Dude was around and we're supposed to go eat burgers. We ended up at Korean food with the uh, Top Top Cali. That was the last time I seen says. He's fucking busy. And when he's not busy, he's going to bars or whatever the fuck. I don't do that shit, so. Good as mine. 
you might luck upon someone who's a natural born sheriff. I heard of one fella what got himself locked in that NCR jailhouse up I-15. And maybe that ain't the best credential, but a sheriff's a sheriff. I imagine the NCR would be able to bring some law to the town, too. But from what I've seen, they barely got the firepower to protect themselves. Finally decided to make yourself useful, huh? You can bring the law back. Yeah, I made the game sound loud in my voice on purpose. So that way, if you don't want to listen to me ramble, you can listen to the game instead. Yeah, bye. Hello there. What brings you to Prim? I'm Ruby Nash. Please, my husband and I are Prim long times. He fancies himself a traitor, and I know my way around the kitchen. My specialty is a rad scorpion venom casserole. It's more appetizing than it sounds. The venom has a sharp, smoky flavor, and it numbs your mouth so fierce you'll forget you ever had a tongue. It's perfectly safe, long as you don't have sores in your mouth for the venom to find your blood. Cause that'll kill you dead. Does sound good, don't it? How many red scorpion... Guess you'll be needing to find some, huh? Come back when you... Bye. Bye. things retarded. We know Prim is a great strategic point, and we aren't blind to the needs of the town, but we're barely holding our own against the powder gangers. We don't have the guns or the personnel needed to carry out our mission, much less take on defending the... What we need more than anything is bodies. 
If we had just one more squad, we could easily install a sheriff and we'll still handle our primary objective of protecting the interstate south of here. If you'd like to see the NCR include protection of Prim and its duties, then you'll have to get some more troops up here. Night at Mojave Outpost may be able to help. Have you gotten us any additional support yet? Roger. So now, go down here to Mojave Outpost, or go fight a whole bunch of assholes at the prison who hate my guts because I killed the fuck out of them in Good Springs. I'm voting for the Mahobi Outpost. Also, because they have good gear down there. When you say I love you. Each and every one of you is wonderful in your own special way. Whoops, better put on my newsman fedora here. Rumors persist about a super mutant refuge nestled high in the ski lodge to the northwest. If you should find it, do not. Repeat. Do not be yeah, a little I've okay done that prison place before. For taking the I even gone there afterward and Moving got on. really fucked up. Troubling news from Prem. As merchants report a large presence of armed and savory figures patrolling the town. Residents are nowhere to be found. Today's headlines were brought to you by Prem. Prem, the other New Vegas. More classics coming right up for you, so stay tuned. That up there is where I'm going. Crowbar, I'm taking I'm it. sworn to carry your burdens. Look, dude, you got this, you got that, you got that, you got all these fucking things. What the hell? Sure thing. Not good enough for you? Let's do it. Why isn't this guy? I'm sworn to carry your burdens.
You can keep the babies. <laughs> If I switch to the grenade launcher. Hey. Yeah, yeah fix those motherfuckers.
I don't know what Hydra does. I don't remember. What does Hydra do? Hmm. Restore limb condition. giant ants are over there by the gas station Scorpions in here, I think. Now I wish 
He might have. He is kind of a noisy kid. Quietly. The Legion can count on that. You a courier? If so, this might be your lucky day. If you don't mind walking a bit. And your eyes are good. I think there's trouble in Nipton. No traffic from there on the roads. And while I can explain that away, smoke from the town can't. I'm sure it's been hit. What I need to know is if they survived it. Might be powder gangers with all that smoke in the air. If there's anybody left, they'd be in the Nipton Town Hall. Go there. Check it out. Let me know what you find. All right. Look at you. All fired up and ready to go. Wish the others around here had that kind of attitude. Listen, I don't want you getting killed for this. So if you head there and run... Not much to tell. One of the worst posts in the NCR if you're looking to be anything more than a babysitter. Full up here, but just enough so we can't send out patrols. Gotta maintain a standing force. Jackson's... Can't spare men for patrols or escorts, so caravans are backing up here like a Brahmin with a bottle in its ass. Typical NCR bullshit. Kimball's Kimball. Not sure which end is his ass or his head. Caravan families are causing trouble. Big circle getting tense. The usual. Look, you want gossip? Go to the bar downstairs and listen to a whole lot of nothing. Me? I gotta keep watch, then fill out the daily log. Mind just... So panels... Part of Electric City. Caravan, citizen, pilgrim, or... Just need something for the logbook. Keeping tabs on traffic throughout the outpost. Or mostly just in, not out these days. If you're looking for the commanding officer, he's in the back. Although, he's got a lot on his plate, so if... Also, if you need any gear checked, we can get you up and running again. Once you fill out the work orders and sign for the parts, of course. Great. These units are stationed up there. We're having problems with some of the NCRCF convicts. What can I help you with? Oh, 
I'd like to help. We can't spare any more yeah, that's part of the mod. We have to maintain a minimum headcount at the outpost. We're from the west. I see the wisdom in that. I'll radio for a unit to head up to Prim and offer some additional support. Help? Oh, well, you could speak to Ranger Jackson. He might have something for you. He sort of runs things around here. Mostly ends up sending reports back west that aren't filled with the best news. NCR border guard duty, mostly. It's our job to make sure the caravans can move safely along our... Not the best posting or assignment, but it beats being sent east or patrolling the Colorado. Dismissed. Take me. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go take a piss and I'm gonna smoke a cigarette. Typhoon is going pretty strong around here.
Yeah, listening to Three Dogs. Oh, wow, wow, on Dallas News Radio, the number one radio station in the greatest in the world. All right, I'm back. I'm back again. Yeah, I can't really go on. Take my headphones off. It sounds like a bunch of apocalypse. But that's beginning. Corrugated tin roof. Even a little bit of rain sounds like. Oh, the breaking news, but actually it is. Looks like we got a new visitor in the old Brahmin thing. Not many people coming here in a hurry. Only passing through. And if you're passing through, you picked a bad time. Road north has gone to hell. And if I let a caravan through, they won't make it. Soldiers, no. Recruits, yes. And the Mojave Outpost has been ordered to have a standing force at the NCR perimeter at all times. So sending anyone out reduces the outpost's numbers and would be in direct violation of my orders from back west. Frustrated? No, I have my orders. Signed and approved all the way up the chain from Kimball. I understand the reasons. The outpost isn't a legion target, yet. Not like Vegas or the Dam. But if the caravans get choked here, that's gonna bite NCR hard. Anyway, didn't mean to talk your ear off. Some days, I feel like more requisition forms and daily reports come across my desk than results. Sending more troops, yes. To reinforce the outpost, no. Troops head through here on their way to McCarran, or to the front lines of Forlorn Hope. Or they're on leave, on their way to New Vegas to piss away their pay. All of them passing through. Help. No, look, I appreciate... Uh, you know what? Yes, I could use the help. You look like you can handle yourself. I need to get the caravans <laughs> moving. That means clearing a path north. There's too much crawling the asphalt up the road to allow it. Thanks, I appreciate it. Come back here when you're done. I might accidentally leave some supplies to pay you. Clearly, up the critters on the road. We won't go quiet. Those little fucking ants. What if you're cruel? You can be New face in the outpost. Must have come from the north. So, what do you have? Not too much. A lot of caravans going nowhere. A lot of troopers going nowhere, too. A few prospectors here and there, but they don't do more than stink up the place. Everybody's backed up here. You'd think it'd be good for business, but most of the traders are tight with the caps, even the larger caravan outfits. Take a look.
Bunch of these cards I never quite figured out the hell they're for. So be sure when you say I it's a sin to tell to tell a Work around here. Might check with Jackson in the main building or ghost up on the roof above, but watch out. She's, well, she's going to it. Don't tell her I said that, though. Might take a bullet some night when I'm going to the latrine. <laughs> she's kind of a bitch. Yeah, she is. But she did give me work. Fine, then. There, no more boom out of a limo bullshit. Looking for trouble? So I do need to go back to Prim and tell those fuckers, Lieutenant Hayes or whatever the hell his name is, that they're going to send more people. Got no time or answers for you. Ask a drifter in need of a few caps. All right? No, I'm not all right. Drinking to forget, and it's only getting me mad instead. Whiskey always gets my temper up now more than ever. Drinking used to cause all sorts of trouble back west. Before I punched enough people, that is. And they learned to lay low in the whiskey hit. Lost my caravan heading north. The driver burned to ash. And they didn't even take the cargo, they just burned that too. My guess is Legion. They're trying to cut NCR's supply line, and the Mojave outpost is proof. Got us locked up tighter than a new Vegas virgin. No caravans in, out, and just try arguing with Jackson about it. 
Roads aren't safe, he says. No shit, you washed that old fuck up. I didn't need a Brotherhood scribe to tell me that. Yeah, he's been with NCR so long, all he can see is the worst outcome of everything. So he doesn't do anything. Jackson won't let me head north. It's not safe. And even though my caravan's gone, my caravan yeah, papers are keeping me here. Together. So if you came here for work, my advice? Go find the Crimson Caravan branch south of Vegas. They can help you out. What's up? Whiskey and me are old friends. Keeps me going when times get rough. Like now. Got me into the caravan business, you know. Had to start transporting water instead of liquor, though. If I hadn't switched over, I'd end my trip with nothing but glass bottles rattling on the back of a Brahmin. You take care now. trying to avoid fast travel but I really want to just go back to Prim I've actually been on this road I wonder if that outpost is where Searchlight Nevada is supposed to be. That was a little shithole in nowhere town. <laughs> I figured. <laughs>
Yeah, there's deputy dipshit. Well, if it isn't the lawbringer. My problem is that I'm no longer a deputy. I'm just a beagle now. Apparently two and a half months of law enforcement experience doesn't count for anything. The new regime is just that. All new. He's rude. Don't tell him I said it. Prim has a sheriff now. Just not as supportive as I would have hoped. Yeah, great bitch. We will break into your house. Investigate. the old sheriff there. Everybody fucking leave. Howdy, partner. Welcome to the video. Just mose you on over to the display case and you'll see it plain as day. Might have pissed that gun. Mint condition, never fire. You're plum loco, partner. Happy trails, partner. You brought the law back to Prim, youngster. Hats off to you. That beat up old friend. 
A courier dropped it off a couple of months back. I got it working for a little while, but the darn thing too fast. I haven't been able to get it up and running again. I was hoping to use it for some courier work. <laughs> Are you welcome to try? It's yours if you can get it working. If I had my way, I'd dump it in the scrapyard in Novak and be done with the damn thing. Hell if I know. I don't think it's serious, but my tinkering days are long gone. Don't. Hey there, youngster. Yep, I got more ammunition. On the other hand, I'm paying them NCR taxes, so now you've got to as well. Hey there, youngster. Yep, I got more ammunition now that the NCR keeps supplies flowing. Another satisfied customer. Bye. No incinerator. Hey there, youngster. Yep. Yeah. Now he didn't have money.
Hey there, youngster. Give me a shout if you need anything else. Bye. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Gibson Scrapyard in Novak. Where is that? <laughs> One there. Uh, I think there was a request going over there. Nipton? Where is that? No? Nipton? Oh, that's where I'm going next. Hey there. Hey there.
and refugee soldiers, the Liggett took over an underperforming squad of troops by beating its commander to death in full view of everyone. The Legate then ordered a tenth of his own force be killed by the other nine tenths. And you thought your boss was a pain. Also, NCR Correctional Facility is now under prisoner control following a successful riot. Locals should avoid anyone who looks like they've done time. The news has been brought to you by the Vicky and Vance Casino. Vicky and Vance, be our partners in crime. And now, I'd like to play one of my very favorite songs for you. Hey there. Hello, welcome to Randall and Associates. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Stephen Randall, owner and operator. I assume you're here for the position, correct? Hell yes, it's open. I can begin the interview if you're ready. I only have one question. Are you willing to kill people for money? Yes or no? It's good, but I need to be up front with you. You'll be pursuing high-risk bounties. Many of the targets are extremely dangerous. But with the high stakes comes increased rewards. There's cash for every bounty, increased payment, and you complete more contracts. There's quick money in bounties, but you can rapidly make a name for yourself, and a lot of people will be looking for payback. So, what's your decision? Are you still ready to pursue the bounties? Your first target is Tom Quigley, a former NCR Ranger who's rumored to be the best marksman in the Mojave. Apparently, he contracted syphilis steadily lost his fucking mind. Despite his abilities with the rifle, he was drunk no, out of the range. He eventually yet. turned to banditry and murder. According to Bethesda great fish, I don't have a good enough computer to play it. From afar. Quigley's crazy, but he's still damn lethal. He's usually camped out in the hills west of the old side gas station. Any questions? That's for me to know and you to find out. Any other questions? Good. Bring back Quigley's trigger finger as proof, and you'll get the bounty. Just don't get killed out there. This gift, friend. I'll stick by our deal and give you a tale of my own in exchange. I think I have just the story in mind. Would you like me to tell you the story now, or should we save it for another time? It's time for the nightly bedtime story because it's 9.30 here and I still haven't eaten dinner. So this will be the, uh, the ending story. This story is about the vaults they constructed before the war. Would you like to hear it? Very well. On October 23rd, 2077, the nightmares became all too real when the Great War commenced. Blinding light ignited the sky, and people ducked and took cover as they had been taught, cowering under whatever they could, hoping that if they kept their eyes closed and remained still, that the merciless flames would pass them by. They hid beneath desks at school, under cars on the street, and behind desks at work. Perhaps a few were in their beds when the flash appeared on the horizon, and perhaps they drew their blankets over their head like children, hoping that the searing pain was just a bad dream. The ballyhooed tactic of duck and cover proved ineffective against armies that no longer cared about winning. Mutually self-assured destruction was the goal, and the American and Chinese exceeded it in spades. Hundreds of millions of people lost their lives within minutes, and billions more died over the days to come as radioactive fallout settled over entire continents. The fallout muddied the oceans, clouded the sky, and sunk deep into the soil. 
Those who happened to be in the right place at the moment the bombs fell managed to survive. These lucky few formed the primitive tribal societies that struggled for survival in the years immediately following the war. Hidden from those tribal bands were another group of survivors, those who had been selected for Project Safe House. 100,000 people fortunate enough to have been offered shelter inside impregnable survival shelters called vaults, created by the Vault Tech Corporation. The first vaults opened again a few years after the war, and their inhabitants slowly spread throughout the wasteland. By now, tales of the vaults have spread from coast to coast although not many people alive today have actually been inside one. At the height of pre-war civilization, the government and a few powerful corporations knew that an apocalypse was brewing, so they used their finest technology to create vast subterranean bunkers that could withstand a nuclear blast, a meteor impact, global flooding, or other likely disasters. The general public wasn't entirely convinced that their end was nigh, Otherwise, there would have been a greater demand for vaults. When the war started, there were only about a hundred of them scattered across America, and many held less than the thousand people they were intended to hold. Those who were smart enough or lucky enough to be inside one when the end came were protected from the devastation by airtight steel doors, thick walls of concrete, and over 200 feet of soil. The fine engineers at Vault Tech designed their bunkers to run independently for 10 years and even more. Geothermal power, hydroponic farms for growing food, and a water purification system so efficient vault residents could fool themselves into thinking they weren't drinking their own urine. The designers made the vaults as homey as possible despite the steel-clad walls. The cafeterias were designed to look a little like roadside diners and vault dwellers could close their eyes and imagine that they were eating a plate of Blamco mac and cheese. Shiny new medical robots tended to those who suffered from mundane illnesses and injuries. While on the surface world, billions died from radiation sickness, burns, starvation, and violence. Housing wasn't as spacious as on the surface, but there was plenty of room for several hundred people, and the vaults that held a few thousand or more could work out fair ways to share their bunks for a while. Each vault was run by a leader called the Overseer, who ran the underground community from a command center deep inside the complex. The Overseers were, usually, selected for their exceptional leadership skills. The vaults were comfortable enough, but after 10 years the radiation had gone down in most parts of the country, and the vault dwellers expected to head back up into the sunlight and begin rebuilding their flawed societies. Vault Tech had prepared them for anything that might await on the surface. The vaults had all the research material that they would need to rebuild America, including the entire Library of Congress on Holodisc, plus 101 recipes on how to cook rats. Those who have walked the wasteland know that the world isn't a kind place. Sometimes people think of the pre-war days as a golden age, a time when people were better to each other. But there wouldn't have been an apocalypse if that were true. No, people were cruel and callous to each other even back then, and the folks who ran Vault Tech were no exception. We've all heard of Vault City, a paradise built by the people who emerged from Vault 8 using a pre-war device called the Garden of Eden Creation Kit. They represent what the world could have been like if only Project Safe House had been on the up and up. Unfortunately, Vault Tech had some ulterior motives, and vaults like Vault 8 were rare. The poor fools who weathered the fallout in Vault Tech's nuclear shelters were the control groups in horrible experiments. Keep people nice and safe for 10 years, then open up and build a new Garden of Eden? That happened a few times out of a hundred vaults. Most vaults were designed to deliberately malfunction as part of an experiment to see just how far the human mind could be pushed before it snapped. Unbeknownst to the vault dwellers, Vault Tech and some elite factions of the government had their own shelters far away from the public vaults. These elite wanted to learn how to rebuild society by observing the inhabitants of the defective vaults. Some of the vaults were designed so that their inhabitants would be trapped in isolation for generations. Think 10 years locked in a vault is a rough trip? Try 80 or 200. There could even be people still sealed inside hidden vaults that haven't opened yet. Other vaults had experiments that only a lunatic could conceive. A thousand men with only one woman. A thousand women with just one man or even one man trapped all alone in his own vault with nothing but a crate of puppets for company. 
One vault even seemed like it was designed as a personal playground for a sadistic vault tech employee who just wanted some poor souls to suffer forever in a virtual reality where he was a god in a world of his own making. You might be wondering if the vault dwellers ever figured out what was happening to them. Did any of them learn that their lives meant nothing to vault tech That they had become no more than lab rats in a mad experiment? Maybe the inhabitants thought that their problems were accidental supply errors. Or maybe they realized what had happened and cursed vault tech with their dying breaths. Who knows if these experiments turned up any useful information for the sons of whores who devised them. But all the suffering wasn't for nothing. Many vaults did open, even if later than expected. Some of the people who emerged went on to do great things for the wasteland. Parts of what used to be the capital of this land even has fresh water thanks to some helpful vault dwellers and technology scavenged from the old vaults. Looters hoping to uncover riches and pre-war supplies should be wary of the vaults, though. Project Safehouse has brought some troubles to the wasteland, too. The super mutants, for instance, are connected to the corporation behind the vaults. Just remember, Wanderer, it isn't worth getting killed by mutants just because you heard about a stash of fancy lad snack cakes inside some old vault's pantry. There's a whole city of ghouls who came from one of the vaults. Sometimes you'll meet a ghoul who claims to have been alive back before the bombs fell. Don't pay them no mind, unless they're wearing a Vault 12 jumpsuit. That vault, the door never sealed up all the way. Maybe it malfunctioned, or maybe it was more of Vault Tech's shenanigans. But the people inside got just the right dose of radiation to turn into the very first ghouls. The idea of a piece of the old world sealed fresh is just too romantic an idea for some people to resist. Of course, most wanderers have the sense to stay away from the vaults. If you really can't help yourself, though, there's a city called New Vegas where people can get a look at the inside of a real live vault without having to worry about mutants, ghouls, or old security bots. Right in the middle of the New Vegas Strip is an old vault that they turned into a hotel so that travelers have some place to sleep while they waste their caps boozing, gambling, and whoring. Tourists can even grab a Vault Tech lunchbox in mint condition or a stylish vintage Vault 21 jumpsuit. We don't know how many vaults are still out there undiscovered. They're hidden well, and Vault Tech like keeping their secrets. Maybe a few of these unknown vaults still have people living inside, the descendants of that first group of survivors. Or maybe there's a thriving society buried right under our feet that doesn't even wonder what the outside world is like. Sooner or later, though, that door has to open. Even the fine makers of the vaults couldn't build a system that will contain humanity forever. And when those vault dwellers take their first steps out into the bright sunlight and feel the sands of the wasteland beneath their feet, they'll find the world has changed a lot in 200 years. It's a big, mean world. Their overseer is small potatoes compared to some of the factions that run things now. Well, it is just about 10 o'clock here, so I'm going to save game. And sign out. Thanks for watching the work rule. You always stick with me to the end. Thanks for watching everyone else. If you want me to mention your name, then you need to stick around. I'll see you next time. And like I said, thanks for watching. <laughs>